able to look at Euler's method of numerical integration. Now we've looked at slope fields and we know that the slope field represents all the possible solutions to a differential equation. So here my differential equation is the y by the x equals 2x. So if I have some starting point, suppose the origin, then I have a solution here. If I have a different starting point, so 0, 1, a different solution. What uh, all those methods will let us do is if we have a starting point, we can approximate where the next point will be on our solution curve. So we have a, a beginning point, a starting point, so x0, y0. We know the differential equation, which is the slope function. We want to guess what the y coordinate is for the next point. We have a, a gap between consecutive x values of h, and we know if we work out the slope using the first principles, we end up with the following equation. So the slope function f dash of x naught is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus f of x plus h minus f of x on h. And in this case, our x value is x naught, so that has been replaced here and here. Now, as h approaches zero, so h is getting smaller and smaller, then the value of f dash of x naught is approximately this value here. Now we can rearrange this equation here to make f of x naught plus h the subject. So the h will multiply f dash and the minus fx naught will add. So we end up with that expression there. So what is f of x naught plus h? So here's x naught, we add h, we're ending up with the y coordinate for the next point, which is our guess point. So y1 is equal to y0 plus h times f dash of x0. So the guess for the y coordinate is equal to the previous y coordinate plus the size of the gap times by the derivative of the previous x value. So here we can demonstrate what's happening. We have a differential equation, we have a slope field, and we have a starting point. So where do I draw the curve? We can see that if I follow these um, lines, these tangents, the curve should end up coming around such as this somehow. So if I were to decrease the gap between uh, successive x values, I can slide in here and we can see that my points are getting approximately bent into the shape of the curve. And if we keep on reducing the size of my gap, so increasing the number of points, we can see that I'm ending up with a, a curve that follows those grid lines. And if we were to show the solution curve on this program, we can see that grey line there and the approximate blue line are very close to each other. So in summary, if we have um, a starting x value, then uh, our next x value would equal the beginning x plus the gap of h. The next y value is the previous y value plus h times by f dash of the previous x value. So in general terms, at any x value, we would add h to get its value. For any y value, we would add h times f of f dash of the previous x value to the previous y value to get the y term. And that's Euler's method of numerical integration. Now, we have seen this expression before and in another form. If you rearrange that equation there, you end up with this expression, which we've seen before for the definite integral. So the integral between a and b of little f of x is big F of b take big F of a. Now, what is big F of b? That is the original function, and in fact, the y-coordinate when x equals b. So the y-coordinate when x equals b equals the y-coordinate when x equals a, plus the definite integral between a and b.
for that function. And this gives us the exact value of our next point. So now I shall um, work with this differential equation here. So divide by the x equals 2x. My starting point is the point 0, 1. I want to work out what the y coordinate would be um, when x equals 2. So first up, I've got to work out how many steps I'm going to be using. Uh, let's do this in four steps. So between x equals 0 and x equals 2, that would imply that h is going to be 0.5. So my first value of y, we call it y1, would equal the previous value of y, which would be from my initial point, which is 1, plus h, which is 0.5, multiplied by the derivative, so 2 times by x, where x is the previous x value, which is in fact 0. So we end up with 0 here, we end up with y1 equaling 1. And that occurred when the x value was equal to 0 plus h, which is now 0.5. Alright, my next value of x, or the x2, would equal the previous value of x plus the value of h, which is 0.5 once again, so we end up with 1. So my y value, y2, is the previous y value, which is 1, plus 0.5 times by 2 times by, using our differential equation here, the previous x value, which was 0.5. So we end up with, what we have here, we've got um, a half and 2, that would cancel out, leave us with 0.5 plus 1, so 1.5. My next value sorry, of x, x3, would be 1 plus h, so it's 1.5. So my y value, y3, is the previous y value, 1.5, plus h, multiplied by 2x, where x is now the previous x value, which is 1. All right, so once again, we have a half times 2, which is 1 times 1 we end up with uh, 2.5. And my last value, my x value, will now be at x equals 2. So add 0.5 to 1.5, we'll get our 2. So now the y value equals the previous y value plus h times by 2 multiplied by the previous x value of 1.5. And once again, here's a half times 2, so 1 times by 1.5, we end up with 4 being our value. Now, what would we get if we worked out the exact value using the fundamental theorem of calculus? So my value for y would be the y value when x is equal to 2. That equals the original y value, which occurred when x equals 0, plus the integral between 0 and 2 of my differential equation 2x dx. Now my y value originally was 1, and I have to work out the integral 2x square that, divide by 2, and up between 2, 0, in fact 0 and 2. So I end up with 1 plus, uh, the 2's cancel out here, so I'm left with uh, x squared, so that's going to be 4 minus, put the 0 in here, we get 0, so we end up with 5. So that should be the exact value of y. And we can compare all of that to what we would expect the answer to be. If we've got to divide by the x equals 2x, then if we integrate that, we will get um, y equals x squared plus c. So the actual solution is in the form of y equals x squared plus c. 
Now, that graph goes through the point 01, which means this graph here will in fact be y equals x squared plus 1, since the y-intercept is at 1. And therefore, if I have an x value of 2, what will the y value equal? Will it be 2 squared plus 1, which would in fact equal to 5, which is the value we got over here using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that is a little look at Euler's method of approximation.